Hello, this is Mike Mercer of Mercer Quality Consulting and I want to talk to you today about the most exciting new topic in design experiments that I've come across in a long time. Three level definitive screening designs are the newest uh, topic and it's been created right here in Minnesota by Chris Noxheim at the Carlson School and his buddy of long standing from SAS and JUMP, uh, Brad Jones. I'd like to talk about what the advantage of definitive screening designs are and to say they are primarily used for screening. And uh, as you would want from screening, they have a minimum number of runs. Uh, but they use three levels, low, uh, normal value, high, instead of only high and low. Uh, that's an advantage for engineers who uh, want to know how to uh, set the levels. It allows simultaneous combinations of both con continuous and categorical design factors. It allows you to model curvature when curvature is present and uh, it's free from aliasing which uh, a lot of uh, screening designs uh, suffer from. And if there's only a few active factors it can go uh, from pure screening into a response surface model which you can use for optimization. So it's really quite efficient in terms of uh, screening and usually the next level of an optimization experiment. Now the software that uh, is available to use this is JUMP version 11 which allows for continuous and categorical effects or Design Expert version 9 made here right in the Twin Cities but it's only good for continuous effects or uh, Minitab version 17 but you need a macro that I've written and it allows continuous and categorical effects and uh, it allows you to model, analyze, project a response surface model if there's only a few active factors and then optimize that response surface model. Now let's go talk about the outline for the rest of the video. Uh, let's talk about kind of the godfather of design experiments and see what Jay Stewart Hunter says about definitive screening designs. And then how about a little short description by Chris himself. And then I'll cite an example Chris used in Peter Goose's class at the University of Antwerp. Uh, Peter Goose, Brad, and uh, Chris are kind of the three stars in uh, modern design experiments technology that J. Stuart Hunter talks about as being uh, extremely uh, uh, useful in the modern era. And then I'm going to show you how to use my definitive screening macro in Minitab. The new designs are, are available because of the computer and um, they're really remarkable. And just most recently, the, um, I suppose you want to plonk some names down against the newest designs. It'd be Brad Jones and um, Peter Goose and uh, Chris Knoxheim deserve particular it. Now let's hear uh, Chris speak, uh, and this is uh, something that uh, Jump put out uh, called Analytically Speaking, Conversations with Thought Leaders, where both uh, Brad and Chris talked about definitive screening designs. Hello, I'm Ann Milley, Director of Analytic Strategy in the Jump Division of SAS. Today, I'm joined by the dynamic duo of DOE, Chris Noxheim and Brad Jones, who have an impressive track record of winning awards for their innovative contributions. Chris, why are definitive screening designs such a breakthrough in DOE? Well, I think there are really two reasons. Uh, the first reason is we can screen at three levels. Historically, screening meant only two levels. You have no chance of the engineer has no chance of determining if there's if there's curvature um, and uh, so even though we're using three levels we have a very small design it's just two times uh, the number of factors plus one uh, and uh, so that that's the first reason we can screen at three levels we can we can capture nonlinearities I think the other reason really is that Oftentimes, if there's effect sparsity, these designs will then project down. If, say only three of your factors are active. Now you've got a very uh, statistically efficient response surface design. And so in a follow-up analysis, I can now do optimization. So for the first time, we can, in a sense, do screening and optimization all in one step. So it can save time. Well, I now let's take a look at a, an example of a definitive screening design that uh, Chris did and was uh, published in a, a jump journal. 
it's a catapult example, typical of what uh, 3M does with uh, their uh, training of people using uh, design experiments. Uh, in this particular case, the catapult has six controls, a band tension, which is continuous, and they use three levels. Uh, the stop number, which is a continuous, uh, and they use three levels. Cup placement, which is continuous with three levels. Uh, band attachment on the arm is uh, continuous with three levels. A uh, number of books, zero, one, or uh, zero, 01 or 2 that were stacked underneath the front edge of the catapult so it affects the uh, angle and we treat that as continuous for three levels and then the sixth factor was a two level categorical factor it was the ball type where they used a golf ball and a ping pong ball pretty dissimilar uh, uh, items so here's the article that uh, Chris published in uh, a Jump uh, magazine and down on the bottom is a layout of the design and uh, so he's got tension, stop, cup, band attach, books, uh, ball, uh, standard order, and then there's the results. So uh, the circle runs show that each three level factor is run six times at its uh, middle level. Uh, and the actual four uh, factors were coded one, two, and three, and negative distances uh, resulted when the ball fell behind our, our zero mark. Uh, here's the uh, second page of the article, and there's the students up in the right hand corner. And uh, here's the, uh, the output. We'll come back to this later as I demonstrate to you how uh, Minitab will uh, both uh, create this experiment and analyze it. Now let's take a look at uh, an example of a definitive screening design that uh, Chris did and was uh, published in a, a jump journal. It's a catapult example, typical of what uh, 3M does with uh, their uh, training of people using uh, design experiments. Uh, in this particular case, the catapult has six controls, a band tension, which is continuous, and they use three levels. Uh, the stop number, which is a continuous, uh, and they use three levels. Cup placement, which is continuous with three levels. Uh, band attachment on the arm, is uh, continuous with three levels. A uh, number of books, zero, 01 or uh, zero, 01 or 02, that were stacked underneath the front edge of the catapult so it affects the uh, angle. And we treat that as continuous for three levels. And then the sixth factor was a two level categorical factor. It was the ball type, where they used a golf ball and a ping pong ball. Pretty dissimilar uh, uh, items. So here's the article that uh, Chris published in a, a Jump uh, magazine, and down on the bottom is a layout of the design. And uh, so he's got tension, stop, cup, band attach, books, uh, ball, uh, standard order, and then there's the results. So uh, the circle runs show that each three level factor is run six times at its uh, middle level. Uh, and the actual four uh, factors were coded one, two, and three, and negative distances uh, resulted when the ball fell behind our, our zero mark. Uh, here's the uh, second page of the article, and there's the students up in the right hand corner. And uh, here's the, uh, the output. We'll come back to this later as I demonstrate to you how uh, Minitab will uh, both uh, create this experiment and analyze it. Now let's go to open up uh, Minitab and uh, see how to perform a definitive screening design in the new version of Minitab. This is just out this March 17th. Oh, March 17th, version 17. Is there some connection? Uh, so let's go down to DOE to the uh, and this is a custom macro that I added into the uh, into the menu system. More about that later. How to do that later? But it opens up a uh, dialog box. So we had six prediction factors. We had one categorical factor. Uh, he used two center points. Uh, I want to use uh, standard order, and I'm going to leave the leveling of the categorical factor as text. What we do now is we click the commands button, it writes the uh, macro commands right there, click proceed, here's a little trick, you open up the command line editor, you paste in the macro commands and go submit, and the macro runs, and there's the design. Now I'm going to go in uh, to my uh, 
uh, factors and see that they're labeled X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, and Cat1 for the categorical factor, and there's uh, two levels, A1 and A2. If there was a second categorical uh, variable, uh, the levels would be labeled B1 and B2 to distinguish them. Uh, what I'm going to do now is go in and and rename the columns. This one was tension. And now I'm going to skip over to when it's all done. Now that all the information's in and mimics what uh, Chris had done, let's go in and analyze it. So we'll go up to STAT, DOE, we'll go to the DSD. And now notice down in the bottom there's a number of tabs. We want to analyze the design. So the response column is C11. Number of continuous predictors is 5. Number of categorical predictors is 1. And uh, right now we're not going to store any fits or residuals and we'll leave the confidence level as a default as 0.1. Again, we, we go to commands and then I can click proceed and there is the commands. Also, uh, I'm not going to show it now, but we, if the uh, model reduces to uh, three or fewer uh, active factors, we can project to a response surface, uh, and we can use this dialog. And uh, lastly, if it, we have a response surface model, we can optimize it using uh, this procedure. So right now I'm going back to the Analyze Design, I'm going to Proceed, Again, we're going to open up the control line editor. We're going to paste our analysis commands. And we see the first thing is a residual plot. Normal probability plot looks good. Versus fits looks good. Versus order looks good. Histogram is reflecting uh, that we have a golf ball and a ping pong ball. Let's uh, minimize that. Let's uh, expand the session window and go and see what the outlook looks like. So we've got a uh, analysis of variance. We see the tension, stop, band attach, books, ball, books, books. The quadratic term came out. Uh, and a interaction term, tension and band attach, came out. And uh, then we go down and we look at the coefficients. And we see the constant is 82.92, the same value that uh, Chris got. The equation outputs, there's one for the golf ball and one for the ping pong ball. The uh, coefficients are respective to each one. You can see that there's a difference of 12, so if I uh, add 12 to 79.2, I get 82.92, 82.92, that's what we have. And uh, the coefficients are all the same as Chris has, so we have achieved the same result. So this is Mike Mercer for Mercer Quality Consulting. Uh, thanks again for watching uh, this video on what I think is really one of the most exciting uh, developments in designed experiments in a long time. And uh, we will be able to analyze them using Minitab version 17. 3M's probably still got uh, version 16. Barbara Ryan, who I suspect is of Irish descent, released Minitab 17 on St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. So enjoy and get the new version of 17. It's got a lot of new features. Thanks again. Mike Mercer signing off.